Hello, camp pros. This is Oliver Gregan. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm a summer camp professional. And I'm Matt Hansberger. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm the executive producer of podcasting at Go Camp Pro. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of First Class Counselors. This is a series for camp directors to give to their counselors as they hire and prepare them for the upcoming summer. Because as we always say, great directors know that counselors have the most important job at camp. If you're a great counselor, you're going to have amazing experiences with campers, and that's what's going to make them want to come back year after year. And that's what we want. So we are here to train you for all the skills that camp directors don't have time to necessarily teach you and give you the inside tips on how to be a true first class counselor. So thank you for tuning in to First Class Counselors. Here we're gonna cover one specific topic and cover the essentials as fast as we can. It's the need to knows. The can't go without. The fundamentals. The basics. And for those of you listening, uh, whether this is your first time or whether this is your 13th time or your 30th time, I don't even know what episode number it is, but uh, no matter what time it is, we'd be really grateful if you could uh, tell a friend about the show. Your word of mouth marketing is one of the best ways we can get it out to other camp counselors. And it is, uh, it's a good time to geek out to a camp podcast. I remember back in the days when I started listening to the Camp Hacker podcast, um, I think it started in like 2009 and uh, I would listen with a couple of friends and chat about it because I was a camp dork back then and I'm a camp dork now. So be a camp dork with your friends and share our podcast um, with directors and staff just so we can help even more people become first class counselors and change lives this summer. So what are we talking about today? I know that's Oliver's line usually, but I'm going to take this one because we have a two parter for you. Uh, the first part, we are going to bring you an exclusive interview, exclusive folks, never heard anywhere else. We have an interview with one of the newest and the youngest executive directors of a YMCA camp in North America, exclusive for you. So stay tuned to hear about how this person went from being a counselor, just like you listening, to achieving one of their biggest camp dreams and taking on a huge leadership role. I think you'll love this fellow. I like him a lot. So stay tuned for that. We do have a real topic for you to hear about today. And it's close to the heart for me. How do you welcome new staff? As once upon being a new staff member who had never been to camp before, I truly know what it feels like. That swarm of new information. And, you know, you might be familiar with what camp is, but you're not always familiar with this camp. And Camps every year introduce new staff from all over, whether they be internationals like myself, who is a domestic, but you know, has never been to camp before, or you know, it might be that first year counselor who once upon a time was a CIT, but will be taking on the responsibilities of being a counselor. And that's a huge shift from going from being served to now serving their community. So what's it like when you are that first time counselor is something that we're also going to talk about today, Matt. Right. We want to know what it's like or what the best ways are rather for you as a returning staff member to make sure that that new staff member feels included and feels welcomed, um, especially after the, we're recording this uh, in 2021, leading up to the summer of 2021. And there's been a gap in camp for a lot of people. So the camps are going to be relying on new staff to be coming in to help and people that might not know camp. So from the ground up, how are we going to empower them? But first, I know you've all been waiting for this. It's our interview with the uh, with the new executive director of a YMCA camp in Florida. Uh, let me just see if he's in the room right now. Uh, my friend, are you here? Oh, oh hey, hi, everybody. Matt. It's it's Oliver. Oliver Gregan. Tell us the big news, buddy. Yeah, so I, about a month ago before this recording, uh, accepted a new job as the executive director of YMCA Camp Winona in Florida State, the United States. Uh, I just moved down and when we're doing this interview, I actually, uh, today, I just got into my second week of the job. So uh, it is all very, it is all moving very fast. It feels very overwhelming, uh, but it is all exciting to be here in a very beautiful place uh, getting to do something that I'm extremely passionate about. And Oliver, you were a camp director at your last couple of camps. So you were overseeing some of the same things you're overseeing now, but it's like you've tacked on a whole nother 
part of your portfolio. Um, what are some of the, tell me a couple of the things that as an executive director, you're looking at that you weren't before as a camp director. What are some of the brand new things? Yeah, so like I used to be a summer camp director, which meant I oversaw just the summer camp program and some family camps that happened year round. Um, but now in the executive position, not only do I oversee that, but I'm also concerned with the things that are happening in the office, right? So all those campers have to get registered, all their health forms have to get in, all their things, things and stuff have to get signed. And I was concerned about it, right, as the summer camp director, but now as the executive director, I need to make sure that that's happening and on top of it and that it's flowing. Then you shift over and you're also worried about, you know, the maintenance of the facilities. You know, what does my facility look like? Is it being upkeeped? Do these things, does what needs to get painted? Where is there wood rotting in spots? Um, you know, what, what's broken on camp for the most part? And then yeah. what is it going to look like if we fix it? Uh, that's crazy to think about. Uh, and then also food services. I actually just got off the phone a little while ago with um, my food service director who I had, who had previously worked with me. And she was giving me all this helpful advice on what to think about and what to do when it came to food services at camp. Because now I have to also oversee that part of camp as well. And those are just three areas of focus that doesn't include what we are always talking about at camp, which is program, right? Like we right. talk about program all the time and you forget that there's these other huge facets of camp that your executive director and those support staffs and uh, other people are thinking about all the time. And it, they're so essential. Uh, to be honest, I've in the one week that I've been here, predominantly my conversations have been about those things mm -hmm. rather than what I've always kind of known, which is program. Right. Um, program is the easy thing I know to do. So I can kind of say like, all right, I'll wait on it a little bit longer. And it's been all about like, all right, let's get up to speed on food services, where our maintenance is on the, on the site to make sure that everything's ready and right. that we are registering campers. So it's right. a huge change of focus for you as an executive director. Hmm. Yeah, and and it it's you're relying on other people even more now because you're gonna have to hire some seasonal people to do all the things to do a lot of the things that you might have done as the camp director. So, um, congratulations, and I know that's a lot of work because Winona, because <laughs> I know Winona is a smaller camp. So for some of you out there, executive director means different things at different camps, right? And sometimes there's an executive director and a camp director and a program director and a food services manager and like. 16 maintenance staff members. Um, and Oliver is all of those things. I, if I'm correct, right? Oliver at Winona, you are all of those things. We, we have a facility director who's here on site with me, which is phenomenal to have because uh, it's like, A, it's just a friend, right? That you yep. can hang out with and, and you know, um, and someone who can like support the whole onboarding process. But yeah, right now, um, I'm in the process of hiring kitchen staff because we have none and we need some for summer. And I'm in the process of hiring summer camp staff and right. program staff for our spring groups. So yeah, it's, it's very different than what I have done in the past, but it's also really exciting because um, I've lived in, at camp year round before. So I've <laughs> had to do the plethora of jobs that camp has. Right. Um, now I just have to do it, like have to have to. You are it. in charge of it. Yeah, the buck stops at you for sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was gonna, gonna I was Buck all those here, Harry Truman on front. Of me. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say that uh, this is like shout out to any staff who want to work in Florida this summer. You've got the open casting call right now for staff that want to work with Oliver Gregan this summer. Kitchen staff, he's looking for counselors. You can work at Camp Winona this summer. Free, there's some free marketing yeah. for you. It's 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 nice and warm here. Uh, we have a beautiful <laughs> lake, and. Um, yeah, there. I have been told that right off camp, I can go swimming with like manatees and dolphins and stuff. So amazing. Um, I've been way too focused on work to go and do it yet. But yeah. I swear, I swear to you, when it happens, I will sit to talk about it on the podcast to let you know that I have taken some form of personal time to see some majestic animals. Perfect. Okay, let's zoom in on a couple of questions that uh, camp counselors might want to know. So Oliver, think if you can think back, uh, however many years, I'm not going to reveal your age on the podcast, but um, when you were a camp counselor, 
what did you think that your future in camping was going to look like? Is this what you thought it was going to be? Or, you know, what, what was the dream back then? Oh, man, I originally went to be a teacher. I was going to be a history teacher. And that was kind of the end game. Um, maybe a principal one day, something like that, if I really wanted to reach for the stars. Um, but I fell in love with camp. Like my first summer, I remember, you know, just enjoying every part of it and then crying when I had to leave. And that, that had never happened ever in my life uh, to be like so connected to a place that like that separation was too much to handle. I like leaving my hometown was nothing compared to leaving camp. And I had only been at camp for two and a half months or something versus I had grown up in my hometown my whole life. So right. camp had had a special spot right off the bat. And I knew that. And then I returned the next summer, kept doing it year round. And, and I just kept sticking to it. And then I had you know, the opportunity in British Columbia, Canada, I got to be a director then in New Jersey. So all these things kind of added up. And uh, I think probably when I enjoyed my position in Canada, when I loved doing that out there, and I made new friends at a new camp and everything, I knew it was possible to really take this career somewhere and like make it my career. Uh, cool. So but yeah, becoming an executive director in Florida was like, if you had told me that seven, eight years ago, I probably would have giggled a little bit. <laughs> and been like, oh. Yeah. Well, this, well, this is great. And, and I, I, I think we can unpack, I think we should do another episode sometime on, you know, if that is your ambition or, you know, if you want to take on more leadership at camp, here's how to, here's how to do that. We'll, we'll cover that on another one, but I wanted to know, um, we talk all about skills here on first class counselors, building skills, obscure things like, you know, we, we spent 45 minutes talking about how to get from point A to point B with kids. Um, and it probably isn't this skill, but which skill, Oliver, th did you learn as a camp counselor that you see yourself uh, using the most or using often as an executive director of a camp? Yeah, so it's been a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh yeah, so to say the least, it's really early to say like what specific skills are going to be the ones that I'm pulling out the most. Um, like definitely you can, there's, you know, the connection with people is huge, right? To be able to like talk to another human being uh, is indispensable. I've met, you know, a lot of my board by now, which is another thing I didn't even bring up in talking yeah. about the position. Mm -hmm. um, and I've started contacting and reaching out to my staff. Um, and really reaching out to my community members. That, that's been a huge thing for me in my first week is I wanna make sure that you know right off the bat, I'm going to connect myself to the people who can help me. Uh, and I feel like when you're a counselor, this is something you have to do as well. Uh, you connect to those people so that you can get the help you need. Like when you go to the waterfront, you might not be a lifeguard. So maybe you find out who is a lifeguard and can help you there. Or you figure out who is the person who knows ropes or knows a really great game or who you can rely on in a pinch to maybe like watch your, your campers. And if you develop those relationships, these little asks for help become a lot easier to do because you're connected mm -hmm. to that person. You can help them back uh, and you can, you know, quid quo, uh, quid quo pro, quid pro quo, you know, give a little, get a little. Um, but, and, and then most of all, I think right now, the thing that's helped me the most is I'm like really excited to be in my position. I have, um, from being a counselor, this internal ever stopping, everlasting uh, optimism that I think is mm. super important. You know, uh, I think as an executive director, people, you get a lot of problems probably thrown at you um, right off the bat. And I haven't experienced that yet because I'm facing kind of the opposite where everyone's throwing me like all of their ideas of things they want to do to improve camp. It's like, oh, you know, we could do this to the cabins or we could do this to the waterfront. And, <laughs> and I think every, everyone I've met so far is trying to get like, um, trying to see if they can hook me into the little project they've always wanted at camp. Mm. Uh, which is great. Like, I love it. And I, that's like the optimism is me, right? Because all these people are so hopeful and I am hopeful too. Uh, on, on the other side, and I'm scared about this a little bit, is that realistic side that you also have as a counselor. Counselors have to be very realistic about like safety concerns and what they can do with their time when working with their campers, right? You, right. You're thinking about your schedule. You're thinking about safety. You're thinking about childcare. You're thinking about um, like the rules, the activity. And yeah. you have to think about what's realistic and how to fit that. 
and compartmentalize mm. it into handling it. And as a counselor, you learn that skill really well. And then you become, uh, you know, become a director. And I see myself using that literally every second of every day is how to make decisions and problem solve mm -hmm. optimistically, but realistically as well. Um, and then Matt, I, we talked about it before the show, but I wouldn't feel right if I didn't give you the honor here. Um, when you are a counselor and you've been a counselor for a while, like you learn the skill to, to, to fly, right? Like to go by the seat of your pants and just make it work. Mm -hmm. um, but it comes with time. And right now I'm in the seat where, yeah, I have all those skills from when I was a counselor and I can do things on the fly if I really need to uh, from when I was a counselor or formerly in other leadership positions. But as an executive director, now I'm relearning how to do that, right? Mm -hmm. How to be an executive director now and do things on the fly if necessary. So um, it's going to be weird at first. Like it's going to take me forever probably to do it. I hope yeah. not, but a while. So that's, that's a huge learning curve there is being able to do things when you need to do them um, as quickly as you can. Well, yeah. And there's a difference like you can, you and I, and, and many other like seasoned camp people, you can get up in front of kids and entertain them for half an hour and you can make it up. You can go in with zero plan and you could do something amazing, but you can't, you Oliver Green right now can't look at a budget and find the inefficiencies of it by the seat of your pants. That's going to take you some time or you, you can't prepare um, a presentation for your board necessarily by the seat of your pants because it takes a different set of skills that you have to rehone. Um, so I think as we start transitioning now into talking about new staff, I think a huge part of what we're both going to talk about is remembering um, that that things take time, relationships take time, um, that skills take time to learn. And we have to give those people credit for um, the amount of time that it takes. Um, so to do a full transition into this, Oliver, can you tell me one way that you were welcomed as a new person to YMCA Camp Winona? Share, just share one thing. Oh man. Uh... Let me see. It's been really tough because of COVID. I'll put that out there, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and there's been a lot of nice things. Like there were some things left in my house as a, like a welcome. You know, people were saying hello. People went out of their way to make sure they could come here. Uh, the strangest one I think so far is I'm not 100% sure if this happened, but it's the coolest one I think that's happened so far. Um, I... And I'm saying this and I might be wrong. So please justify, like, don't take it. But it's not that big a deal if I am. So a lot of people are trying to come to camp and like say hello. So I get like text messages from like the board or an email from like a staff member who's like, oh, I want to stop by camp and say hi. And uh, if there was like a slow day the other day, um, maybe on like Thursday or Friday, and I didn't think anybody was coming to that, out to visit or anything like that. And all of a sudden we have a little bell that goes off when someone comes down the road. And a car pulls in and this older gentleman gets out and he says, hi, and his name is, I won't say his name for his own sake because he has no idea about the show or anything. But he says, hi, gives me his name. And I'm like, oh, it's, so, it's such a pleasure to meet you. I have no idea who he is. He's wearing a, a Y t-shirt. So I know he's part of the crew, right? He's part of go. the Y organization. Yeah. Um, and it's like, I just want to walk around for a little bit. Um, and I go, okay. Yeah, you can walk around. Um, that's totally fine. He had told me he had previously worked there as like a program instructor or something. Um, and he later left. And then I was talking to some other people, co-workers and stuff. And they said what his name was. And I found out that he was like an old camp director, like from the days of old kind of deal. Um, and it's just cool to me, like that welcome that there's that history of somebody who cares so much about a camp that even though, you know, they're not actively involved anymore, he still knew there was a new camp director, still wanted to come check it out, maybe size me up a little bit um, and kind of see this old place that he loved so much and kind of make sure it was in safe hands, uh, which I think is the coolest thing um, because I, it almost felt like, and this is a weird thing to say, it almost felt like a guardian angel had come in to like check and I was approved of um, because he later called the camp and said, thank you for coming out. And like, I know that the camp's in good hands with you because I was like warming and inviting to him when he came on. And uh, it was like, that is, 
it's weird because of out of all the meetings I've had, and I've probably met like a hundred people from six feet of distance with masks on in the last, right. um, like last week and a half, like that's the one that's sticking out to me the most because it mm. was just kind of, um, like the most genuine I feel he what he came because he just wanted to make sure that I was the right fit for the camp. Um, just from that short interaction and like, mm. I don't know. It, it was just kind of a beautiful moment in my head. It could be completely different for how he felt about it. He could have been like, all right, I guess this will do. And, <laughs> and that was it. But uh, I liked it. It was, I, I feel like if you are an old camp person, yeah. it's a cool thing to do is to go check out, um, check out your old camp and um, say hi and just kind of see who who's there and how they're doing it, but don't judge them for it. Just, you know, be happy you have someone there. Right. And, and I think the intention of this episode is, is to reach out to returning staff members to say, this is how, this is how you can care for someone who is new. And I think just giving, you know, just meeting them and being very genuine about it. And I love the follow-up that he did there too. Um, because I, I just think that speaks volumes that there too, that he, you know, was someone that's been around camp for a while, was really excited to meet you and passionate and, um, what no matter what his intentions were, he was still kind and and so the fact that you just by being kind and welcoming to a new staff member, you set yourself up on the perfect first step. And I, I would think that that's expected, but I know I've seen um, new camp staff members not get treated like I, I think a new staff member should be treated like royalty at staff training. They are the most important person um, in terms of your eyes as a, a returning staff member. Your friends are are great and great you got to see them again but that new staff member um, definitely needs some love and needs some respect so let's get into some more practical things uh thank you to our uh our interview guest uh oliver gregan executive director of uh, ymca camp winona and uh we're going to get into our quick tips now so we're going to go back and forth pretty quick on ways for welcoming new staff members so uh i've talked for a little bit now oliver why don't you hit us with our your first one the whole first half of the show was me talking. Do you want me to all go right. back? Okay, um, I can take it. I can take it if you want. No, you I can. Okay, all right. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I just think it's fine. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, mine that I'm going to talk about is just being patient. Um, I've definitely talked about this before, but a new staff member, and I can feel it so much right now, they have so much to learn. Like, what? it's the language. It's the way that people act at the camp, right? The culture that you have. Um, it's where the bathroom is. It's where, you know, the laundry is. If your camp has that, it's, you know, what are, oh my God, the dining hall has to be the most intimidating place for a new staff member. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and there's only so much you can cover in staff training. Like you, even though staff training is a week long, which is longer than most any other staff trainings for any other job, it's still not enough time to really get somebody up to speed in everything that happens at camp. Mm -hmm. And even when you get to week six, week seven, right, you're coming towards the end of the roller coaster that is camp. There's still twists and turns that they have to navigate because they've never been through a summer before, right? Because I use week six as the six as the example because think about it. Like week six is a hard week. Everyone's exhausted. They're super tired. Like their burnout is hardcore at that point. Even if you as a director have done everything you can to prevent it, it you're still going to hit some type of a swing. And that's a learning curve for some people, right? Like their frustrations might get the best of them. Their emotions might um, take over. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and you as a former camp person, might also be in that hole and it's really hard it's really hard probably for uh for you to just think and go all right they're learning i've been through the struggle before i need to be the one who's a little bit bigger and realize what's going on here and maybe just give them their space or figure out whatever love language needs to be used to address them uh so that they can they can learn from that summer of like what it feels like to hit that hole uh, and it also might be something simple. Like I once had a counselor who it was week, I think three and maybe wasn't smelling the best. And I, this was brought up to me and it was because no one told her where to do her laundry. Just, it had never come up. She had never asked about it cause she was too scared. So she 
just didn't do, she didn't wash any of her clothes and she hadn't left camp because she was an international and she was really struggling and people were judging her for it. And it was just because nobody had been like, oh yeah, don't worry. It's, this is where the laundry is, right? Um, right. Because she hadn't gotten that learning curve. So um, be patient, understand that they are going to be learning until the last day of camp because they've yep. never experienced it before. Mm-hmm. That's fine. That's great. Thank you. Uh, we are all learning all the time, but it, we are especially learning in our first year at camp, <laughs> right? All these little things. Um, I, I think that's smart. I think the patience is, is great. So thank you for that. Um, my next one goes along. Uh, you might have heard us, you definitely have heard us talk about love languages. So thank you for mentioning that. But you've also mentioned us saying uh, IAAT, right? I am always teaching. So that, that's the reminder of no matter what you do, when you're saying, speaking, uh, doing something, you are leading by example and you're showing those things. And a lot of that is being intentional in your actions. So this is about being intentional about what you say and the words you use are really important, especially when you are around fellow new staff members. Um, so being very careful about inside jokes or stories from the past year or, um, you know, it always really bugged me as a camp director when I, when there were people were sitting at a dining room table and there were maybe two new staff and a whack of staff who were clearly friends and they'd done the right thing and make sure that they were included and in the, in the table, if they wanted to sit with them, but then they just started talking about camp last year all the time. Right. And then they would say these inside jokes, everyone would laugh. And then that person instantly feels excluded. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't share stuff from last summer. I actually know some summer camps who have a no last summer rule for the first 24 hours of training. Um, And for camp directors who are listening, I think that's a Camp Waro thing with um, Jackie and Gab's rail, uh, which wouldn't surprise me as the camp coders that they are. Uh, But if you're going to share a story or an inside joke, I would hope that a first class counselor is going to be the first one to explain it to that new staff member and say, oh, this is why it's funny or this is what we're talking about and this is why it's good. Um, that also goes for uh, the saying that this is the way we've always done it. The phrase that makes every camp director want to snap a clipboard in half over their head. Um, that's not something that you want to be sharing with a new staff member because we want to value their new ideas. Uh, So those words. And the last thing I would say is just be very conscious about camp lingo, any acronyms or even the names of cabins, right? It's not helpful to a new staff member. You like, okay, the uh, Gaga pit is past Sycamore cabin down the lit trail. And if you go down by lopes, uh, then you'll know where the uh, canoeing section is. And the only word that they have heard you say is canoeing. Um, and they might not even know where that is. They don't know where Sycamore is. They don't know what Gaga is. So being very conscious about that insider language that you're using around. And again, I would hope that a first class counselor is going to be the first person to say, oh, I'm sorry. Gaga is a thing that we play here at camp. There's these boards on the ground. We'll get to that game later. Sycamore is the third cabin on the tree cabin side of camp. Do you know where that is? And make sure you're walking through those things. And, and then just being like, hey, how about we walk there together? because I, I want to like, let's go together. So um, that insider lang- lingo linked with my next tip, which will be uh, about including them, but I'll save that for a second. Oliver, please. Yeah, I, you hit a really big one. And that's the, how do you speak about last year? Like I know we, you talked about not speaking about it. I like to also tell staff, think about how you speak about it, right? Uh, is it going to be in this positive manner where you're telling this really cool story or mm. are you just telling the horror stories from last summer? Yes. Right. Um, and horror stories actually aren't bad. They're a learning story, but the way you tell it is really important, right? Like, Oh man, the kids throw up all the time at night. Like sometimes when they throw up, you got to clean up the puke and stuff like that. And it, like some, there was one time they threw up and it got in between like the mattress and the, that's disgusting, right? That's not a fun story to tell. Right. But and I think I've told this story before, or at least I've told it a thousand times. I remember one time where there was a sick camper, the girl threw up in the night. And instead of it being like, oh, this horrible, horrible mess, the next day, it was a fun story. Like th- they were laughing about it. It was funny um, because they didn't just go, oh, I have to clean up vomit at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night. It was, uh, 
okay, it's okay. This is a natural bodily function that happens to people sometimes. Accepted. Moving on. Okay, let's clean it up. And then I think while the camper was getting better, they drew pictures of her like throwing up everywhere to normalize that it was okay that she had been sick. And right. the next day talking to like the little girl who had been sick and the staff members, it was one of their favorite nights of camp. And it had to do with cleaning up vomit, right? Because they, they took what it was a horror story and they enjoyed the mm-hmm. moment, the challenge that it was, and it made it better. Uh, yeah. And then my, my point that I'm here to make is implement some of the ideas and experiences that the new staff members are bringing to the table. They obviously got hired for a reason. Uh, they are bringing something to camp that nobody else can bring because each person's an individual and has their own experiences. And the best part about this is you're both going to contribute this, right? Because they're bringing this idea of something that's really important and fun that they can do, right? If they're just insane at embroidery, we'll say, and they can bring that to camp, you might not be able to embroider, but you might know where in arts and crafts, the needles um, and the supplies are to embroider or say, hey, what do you need to embroider? Maybe we can make it work here at camp and find find out how to do it because you have that ability you have the resource ability they have the skill ability and putting the two together now is a collaboration between you and your new co-counselor that will give your kids a fantastic experience right uh and it it just it could be the same for basketball right you know where the basketballs are they might not right off the bat right you um like you might know some like the rules of the waterfront right and but they're an accomplished swimmer so you can get the kids signed in, checked into the waterfront, ready to go, super ready. And then they can teach a swim lesson that they're significantly skilled at teaching. And Mm -hmm. that's the thought process you have to have, not, oh, I want to do my idea when I want to do it because I'm the camp person who knows everything and I've been doing camp for years. It's a, okay, that my co-counselor really loves drama. I know that stage time is open from three to four. So we can go and do drama from three to four. And then my co can really show off what their skills are. And then that makes your co, this new staff member, feel much more comfortable at camp because they're getting to implement the things that they already know into this learning environment. And it creates a positive relationship instead of a failed one. So that's my second point. Implement their ideas and their experiences into the programs and activities that you're doing. Be their resource. Mm -hmm. I be their resource. I think that's a, that's a wicked way to frame it. Um, right. So my second point here is about including, and I think being included is one of the most important things that we can do for people at camp. And because whether it's staff or campers, we want everyone to have the feeling that they belong at camp. That's how I always felt as a camper and a staff member at camp. And I'm sure many of you listening have that same experience. And so for new staff members, we want to show them this amazing world of being included right from the start. So the obvious ones are making sure that they have a place. Um, at meals, activities, maybe after hours, hangouts after training is done for the day, uh, making sure that they have someone to hang out with. If you're going on a day off or, you know, going to a cottage or something like that, whatever is allowed to happen this summer and into the future, make sure they have a place in the car. Um, because they, as Oliver was saying before, they might not advocate for themselves because they, they don't have the social clout. And you know, some of you out there, you know how close you are with your camp friends. That's really intimidating to come into as a new person. Like think of any social situation you've been to. If you were to walk into, if you were to switch schools right now, or if you have gone to college university for the first time or, or whatever, if you've been the new kid in any situation, you know how hard it is to fit into people who have pre-established relationships. So for those of you that are privileged in those pre-established relationships, um, you need to make sure that they have a place. And here's the trick. It doesn't always need to be you that includes them. I, I, I think it does them a bit of a disservice um, to make, you, you don't want them to feel centered out that you're the person always like doting on them, right? It's saying, oh, have come with me or have, have a place being really explicit about it. But I think it's about taking a step back and just having an eye out for that person. And maybe you take it on yourself to say, okay, I know that, um, 
that Kai is new here at camp. So I'm going to keep my eye on Kai and just make sure that they have a spot. Whether they're, uh, you know, if there's an empty table and they're sitting by themselves, I'm going to go over there. But if they found a space next to a couple other people, that's great. They have a space. They have an opportunity to be included. Um, so remember, it doesn't always need to be you, but uh, they should always be included and you should feel empowered to make a decision and act when they might not be. Okay, actually, you kind of really move into my last point is, and uh, I say time off is really, really important. Uh, camp is, you know, go, go, go all summer and getting that time off is really tough. But it's making sure that that person when they take that time off is still included, right? Like you, you, it's part of, I think, your last point for sure. I just want to specifically hit on it because it, time off is, yeah, it's about feeling included, right? Like that first, you know, there's usually one night probably during staff training where everyone goes out, right? So like, what can you do to make sure that everyone feels included if they're a new staff member at that point in time? It's really hard if that person's, you know, an international, right? Or they're not a local um, to the area, but maybe you're running a camp in Florida and the person is from California, right? They might not have like a car or a way to get around. So it's thinking about how do you take care of that person um, to make sure that they're going to get to the time off that they need to uh, and get to do what they need to during their time off. Uh, and big things too, like I talked about laundry, uh, you know, we had a staff member who couldn't do her laundry. Um, where's a good place to go and eat? Where's a good place to go and relax? Like where's the local park where I can just go and sit for a little bit? Uh, you know, I remember hot summer days, you used to go to the movie theaters. Who knows what that's going to be in summer 2021 but right. like you used to go to a nice cool movie theater watch a really bad movie uh and then go back to camp right uh if someone's new they don't have someone being their guide or getting them out there or getting whatever they do and they might not have the resources to do it so um if you're somebody who's going to be at the camp that summer maybe figuring out if there could be a really close or if they're like if lyft works at your camp or uber works at your camp right so that's a way that they can get off camp on their own. You can let them know that when they come to check in. Um, or it's, you know, maybe it's about making sure that there's a taxi that can come to camp or something. So it can pick people up to take them off camp to do the things that they need to do. Uh, and then making sure that they're also using that time off properly is another big one. Um, new staff sometimes need to learn how time off works um, for a camp. And that might include like, okay, you know, where do we go to, you know, have our drinks and relax for a little bit and, you know, be a part of that social scene for, you know, being a new counselor. And it's really tough to try and fit in and do that for the first time when you've never been with people like that before. So think about the time off and that everyone's covered in it. And Matt says, feel included, but also just make sure that they know where the things are that they need so that when they are on time off, they can get access to those, you know, grocery stores the hospital, right? Like these are strange things you don't think about, but if you can teach them about their community, A, it helps your camp get a better connection with the community, but also B, it helps them uh, feel a little bit more comfortable in this place that they're at. And I think Oliver, that's a good point for camp directors out there too, because, you know, I would think that that uh, camp directors, they're going to give a lot of like, I remember one of our awesome staff training sessions was we did like a, the local town was Baysville and they gave us like a little map and they, it was like a punch card where we could go and visit the local people, which was really fun. Um, but the directors did that. But then, you know, going back to the including thing, it's about doing it with the staff member. You've been to town a million times, go with them and do that scavenger hunt or, or do those fun activities. And if, if your director hasn't suggested those things and they don't, they're not a listener of this uh, very famous podcast, um, then you can suggest some of those ideas to help them feel included. That's a great way to take initiative and make change on a, a big level at your camp. And I'm sure a camp director, you, you saying, hey, I noticed there's a lot of new staff and we were talking and they don't know what's in town. So can, can we do like a little town orientation or can I set something up that, that you make official? So that, that's great. I really love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, and I think this year it's going to be so important, right? Like just uh, a, there's going to be a lot of new staff who are going to be new domestic staff, right. Coming from America who had maybe never been a, a counselor before. Um, and 
that learning curve is going to be really tough, especially with camps who maybe didn't have staff for a year, right? Because they weren't able to hold camp in 2020. And now they're at a point where no matter what, they're looking at a huge turnover. So those returning staff this year, for those of you who are listening, your, your ability to step up to the plate is going to be so much more than it has in other years. And something to put out there for you that I think you as a returning staff member is going to have to think about is camp is going to have changed a lot before you arrive. So as a returning staff member, the other thing I would say is it's been, you know, over a year, it's now been almost two summers for some of you who are returning to camp. Your camp directors have been focused on how to make camp safe, um, you know, making sure that the property, everything stays up to date. Uh, how staffing works and the leadership structure has probably changed. A lot of policies have probably changed. And you as a returning staff member are going to have a lot to learn. But some of those core things, the songs, the dances, the skits, how campfire kind of runs at time, like those are things you know. Um, and those are things you can still be teaching uh, to those new staff members right off the bat, as you too yourself are probably going to feel like a new staff member which is okay when you come to your camp and they're giving you a bunch of new information that you've never heard before. Right. That, and that dovetails really well, all the, all over into my last point is that you, as the new staff member, you are constantly setting an example. And I started with this, but it's also about the attitude you take when it comes to new rules and, and new things, you set the climate for that. So when the camp director this summer during COVID tells you that you can't mix cohorts with another cohort, or you can't go to this space that you've always been allowed to, if the staff lounge is closed this summer because of COVID, you need to be the first one to step up and be like, well, it is what it is that's fine. We'll make it work. We'll have some fun. We'll, we'll, we'll go into the woods. We'll make our, we'll make an outdoor staff lounge. Let's make that a project and then include the new staff member with that, uh, with that project, because you don't have control over some of those things. And if you are a sucky baby about it, then you are showing that new staff member that the, you know, that the awesome people are sucky babies about it. Um, on a less COVID note, you know, it's also about things like taking initiative, right? Picking up garbage around camp or doing those little things that you know how to do to be an awesome counselor and including a new staff member in that. So walking, when you're walking from point A to point B with another new staff member, pick up some garbage and just mention that, you know, one of the things that this camp really, really likes is having nice clean grass. So whenever I walk by, I usually just grab a piece of garbage. Or if you feel like a giant nerd saying that, which I know that some people would, um, just do it and that becomes the new norm. You really don't have to say anything, but pick up garbage and put it in your pocket. And if they ask, then you can tell them. But if not, then you're just setting the standard of that's what you do. Or, you know, a couple of times volunteer to take the plates away at dinner time or wipe the table down or stick around to sweep the floor after, you know, an activity or something like that. Um, and show them, show that new staff member what great initiative taking, initiative taking or what great being a staff member is at your camp. Lead by example in that way. Um, I think that might be one of the golden rules of summer camp is lead by example. Yeah, I, you know, set that bar higher for the next staff member, right? Don't make it unachievable, make it so realistic for what like you have to do as your job for a camp counselor. But, you know, we're always getting better every day as counselors. So, if you're showing them this initiative to be a better counselor every day, they're going to know that that's a trait that they need to copy. And right. then they're going to be going to the bar that they can set for themselves. Right. Cause you can, you can set the bar for somebody else and it will be too high. Right. That's mm -hmm. totally possible. Some people are capable of doing things that other people aren't able to do. And if you set that bar for them, they're just going to fail. Right. But if you set the bar as, this is where we say our initiative is at. This is where we say our effort is at, right? Those are things that almost anyone can go after, right? Like, all right, I can put in my best effort. That's a bar I can make. I can put in my best initiative. That's a bar I can make. And they can continue improving with that. Whereas like, if you say the bar is, I don't know, um, every single day I tie every one of my camper shoes like that a 
try not to tie your camper shoes, especially boys' shoes, because they pee on their feet all the time and you're just touching germs. So don't do that. <laughs> but <laughs> I never I've never maybe, considered that. That's that's the first time that I've ever considered that. That's so funny. Oh yeah, that's why you teach kids how to tie their shoes. You don't have to touch the pee lace. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, hand sanitizer. Shout out to hand sanitizer everywhere. It's, oh, it was it was bigger for me pre-2020 when I was That's tying so shoes. That's so funny. Um, but yeah, but here's the deal. So if your initiative, right, if you're if you're setting the bars, like you have to tie every camper's shoes every single morning, the counselor's going to copy that, right? The, that new counselor is going to be like, okay, I got to tie everybody's shoes. Right. But then you don't realize, oh, wait, hey, they're touching pee laces. But <laughs> if you set the bar for initiative, and the initiative is to get every kid's shoes tied. All right. That opens the door to say, okay, maybe I'm not the one tying, but maybe I'm the one teaching every single one of my boys to tie their shoes. And at the end of that week, every single seven-year-old boy in that cabin can tie their shoes. Right. Because the initiative, like to get them to learn something was there, not right. that the act was finished all the time. Right. Right. The mm -hmm. act still has to get done, but the initiative is different. The goal setting is, is still there. So, okay. um, yeah. That's great. I think that's a great place to take us I, to the eggle. I think it is too. Cause you know, it's a trick, a tip, a game or a song for counselors to use to be better every day. So let's go for it. Ever growing, ever learning the eggle of the day. Uh, I'll start off real quick. And mine is the pine cone game. Uh, I, if uh, you've come down here to Florida, you'll learn that there are these pretty big pine cones um, that fall on the ground and uh, my main instructor was talking about how like all the time they got to go out there and they got to pick up all these pine cones. And if they don't, then the lawnmower like has to eat them and it's not great for the blade on the lawnmower, all this kind of stuff. So I said the pine cone game, right? Teach all the kids the pine cone game when they come here to camp. And that's you pick up a pine cone, and you return it to the tree, right? So the kids will pick up the pine cone and then they throw it underhand i know i'm doing overhand right now but it's really hard to do it on camera they really throw it underhand as best they can kind of like bocce uh and try and get the pine cones closest to the tree and then the winner gets to lead the line or be first to check into the waterfront or whatever it might be right but what ends up happening here is whenever your kids walk by pine cones uh everybody tosses one closer to the tree and all the pine cones start getting closer to the base of the tree and then that way when the maintenance staff go out all of a sudden all the pine cones are close to the base and raking it up is really easy instead of them being spread all over the lawn where the lawnmower normally has to cut grass and they just you know scoop them into the back of their little wagon on their tractor and they can drive off instead of having to walk you know a thousand paces trying to pick up pine cones and the kids are helping in a way they didn't know so it's a pine cone game i love it i love the pine cone game that's super yeah. duper uh, shout out to florida pine cones Okay. Yeah, my, also in California. Oh, look at that. It's coastal, shout out to Coastal Pine Cones. I, I guess that's what it is. I guess. I like big. I like that big. Yeah. I don't know if I've seen those. That's exciting. I'll, when I come and yeah. visit you, Oliver, once the border opens up, um, we'll, we'll play the Pine Cone game. I love it. All right. But you got to show off your eggle because if anybody's watching YouTube, they're getting more excited watching you pull out your guitar than they are listening to me talk about pine cones. So, <laughs> All right. So uh, my eggle is the four chord song. Um, and you might have seen this. Uh, th there's a great YouTube, like very old, like comedy YouTube video of the guys from the Axis of Awesome. Um, and they do they do this four chord song, which is at the time. Uh, they went through like 20 pop songs that you could you could play or you could sing along to and ba use uh, these four chords as a backing track for. And it's not perfect, but I was talking about this today um, with a colleague and I was saying how as an LIT director, I spent we spent probably two hours out in the field playing these four chords. My fingers like oh, were almost bleeding uh, at the end of those two hours. But we went through unique songs for two hours, including like the camp songs and camp graces and commercials um, and Broadway songs and pop songs. Uh, so there's a bunch. So the four chords, um, if you are a guitar player, I, I just have the visual here, but hopefully you can hear it through my mic too. The chords are E minor, C, G and D. And if you if you strum it kind of like this, like a I'm not sure Zoom sometimes doesn't pick it up well. But I can't I can't sing along because I don't want to get copyright infringement against our podcast. But 
but take a second and just think of one pop song. Maybe you can think of, um, uh, there's a song about airplanes and shooting stars in the night sky and wouldn't you could really use a wish right now. That's, you know. I don't know if you can hear it in your head, but uh, that's how you do it on guitar. On ukulele, uh, because those are hard, E minor is a tough chord in ukulele, the same progression can be done with A minor, F, C, and G. And it's the same. And you can really hear, there's a song about being under a bridge by, the, uh, by a band with some spicy peppers um, that you can really hear. Actually, and, and a song about um, the winter season um, and, and not and precipitation that's frozen that also works with that song as well. So uh, that is the four chord song and you can have a blast with that at the uh, next campfire that you're at. Uh, it's amazing how simple music can be, but also it, I could never pick up a guitar and do what you just did. God's honest truth, <laughs> just couldn't do it. We have different skills. Um, yeah, different skills. You know, everybody at camp offers something different. You're going to be offering that, and I'm going to take the kids over, and we're going to make ice cream. Ooh, I like it. Okay. I think that you'll be um, more popular. With... <laughs> <laughs> hey, music is for the soul, and ice cream is for the soul and the stomach. <laughs> it sounds like we, we would make a great co-counseling pair. Can you imagine, Oliver? We would It would be so much fun. I There has to be, like, one day that every like camp professional just decides, okay, we're going to run a camp pro camp. Yeah. And it's just all of the great camp pros that we know, doesn't matter how old or young, maybe everyone time travels to like their prime self as a counselor. And we mm. run a camp that summer. And it's just like, oh man, I can imagine like you, Travis, me, ruby the whole crew like i'm just going through camp pro people but everybody just like <laughs> in them like in their best self but like i don't know oh, we're all man. in ringer tees and and short shorts too so <laughs> my imagination goes too far oh man um but yeah the, the whole go camp pro crew obviously part of it and camp, then, go, camp, um, camp go camp pro i like it yeah oh yeah. man that's even a good name <laughs> we're there okay um so Matt, if people want to get a hold of you, um, how are they going to do that so they can ask you about um, registration for Camp Go Camp Pro? <laughs> yes, uh, registration opens. It is a thousand dollars a week. Um, you can pay it. You can Venmo me. No, you can't because I'm in Canada. We don't have Venmo. Uh, you can send me an email, Matt at GoCamp dot pro um you can find me on instagram i'm not on those parts a lot lately but my camp name is iscus i-s-c-u-s and that's where i am on instagram how about you oliver uh you can reach out to me at oliver.gregan.scd at gmail.com uh for any of your camp questions i will admit that i'm a little bit slow on the ball right now because of the move <laughs> and the new job um, so I want to give a shout out to Chelsea, who has been emailing me about CITs, which is phenomenal. Uh, I'm loving the conversation that we've started. I apologize, Chelsea, that it's taken me so long to answer your questions, but I guarantee I will answer them all before summer starts and with enough time that you can get everything together for your wonderful new program that you're starting. Uh, and um, for everybody else, I'm still here for you to shoot an email at, I will get back to you. <laughs> within a week hopefully <laughs> and maybe maybe, hey, send, maybe send, time frame. yeah maybe send me an email and for the next couple of weeks yeah. when it comes to like september you can get oliver back in the mix give the guy yeah, a break yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm, I'm actually much better at like phone calls so you can actually call camp winona i'll pick up the phone i guarantee it um, and we can even talk to camp for, you know, 10, 15, an hour, uh, because I'll get distracted by our conversation and just really make the best of it. So oh, uh, you can call me now at Camp Winona because that's where I'm at. And if you want to ask how my experience is going, um, I would love to talk about that too, because it's a stress reliever for me to like get the things out of my mouth that I'm thinking about mm. uh, to somebody who wants to know about those things. So yeah, reach out to me, call Camp Winona. Our phone number, I don't have memorized yet, but you can <laughs> go on you can go on to Google and you can find us and get a hold of us and um, we'll you know, put, we'll, give we'll advice, put, get advice. 
we'll put the info uh, for Camp Winona in the show notes. And I, I think it'd be great if Oliver got a bunch of emails um, saying congratulations on the new job, because uh, Oliver, on behalf of myself and everyone at Go Camp Pro, we are super happy for you. Um, and you. we have got your back. I know it's a big job. Um, so, you know, you can always send me an email, but you've got our whole, you've got the camp universe. All of our listeners are a hundred percent behind you on this one. Thank you so much. It's a huge role. And I'm so excited. And, uh, it does make me happy to know I have all you amazing camp pros out there who are listening, um, right there at a fingertip away. Um, but with that being said, if you enjoyed today's show, we'd be so grateful if you left us a review, wherever you're listening to this podcast, your ratings and reviews not only tell us what you like and don't like about the show, but it helps boost our rankings and helps more people discover what we're doing here. And don't forget to check out the show notes to find out how to get in touch with Oliver and see links and all the other fun stuff that we do here at gocamp.pro slash FCC. There's lots of great stuff there. And if you go to gocamp.pro, dot pro slash podcast you can see the six other podcasts that we're doing we just launched a new fundraising at camp podcast that uh, i think is going to be a great pre-summer setup and it's a new one so please check that one out as well with that being said thanks for listening friends camp is camp and camp's all good <laughs>